I've been thinking about Nintendo's 2022 a lot recently, so I've decided I'm going to do the slightly misguided thing and attempt to predict it month by month, knowing full well that they are an unpredictable company. At the time of recording, it's 12.10 on the 31st of December 2021. My last video took me 11 days to make, and this one is supposed to go up tomorrow on January 1st. So this is going to be a little bit of a whistle-stop tour. I will stick mainly to the actions of Nintendo and games releasing on Switch in 2022, and I'm going to talk about new trailers and directs, release dates, and for some games I will come up with light concepts for what I think they could turn out like. Bear in mind that I have no idea what I'm doing, and these predictions and guesses are based on leaks, rumours, and gut feelings. So make sure that you take absolutely everything I say as the unchallengeable truth. January. The month will begin and rumours and leaks will start pouring in as they always do, but this time mainly about a new 3D Mario game and a lot more strong rumblings about the Fire Emblem remake. Pokemon Legends Arceus will come out this month and it will be like what Pokemon Let's Go was. A clear testing of the waters for features they'd like to use in future Pokemon games. People who are more cynical when it comes to modern Pokemon games and the Pokemon company's actions will be disappointed at missed potential, but it will sell tremendously well as Pokemon games always do. February. Nintendo will do a Direct at the start of the month, and they'll start by announcing an upcoming Splatoon 3 Direct for a week later. Kirby and the Forgotten Land will get a new trailer and get a release date of April 8th, 2022. There was recently a Hollow Knight Silk Song leak which said it's releasing in February. So I'm going to go all in and say we get a trailer in this direct and it will release a couple days later. Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp will get another trailer and given a release date of March. I don't really want to go anywhere near the Atlas fan bases. However, I have this handy barge pole, so I'm going to go out there and say that they'll announce a Persona 4 Golden Port for Switch, releasing after the Direct, but I doubt there'll be any Shin Megami Tensei news though, as we just got 3 and 5 quite recently. But, uh, let's throw in a Persona dancing game and say it'll launch in June, because why not? We'll then get a trailer for the rumoured Metroid Prime remaster, which will be wholly disappointing that we aren't getting the Trilogy remaster, but alas, it will be given a release date of May. The Direct will end with a teaser for the heavily leaked and rumoured Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which will be slightly confusingly scheduled for 2023 and everyone will kind of be sat there wondering why they announced it so damn early. A couple days later, Hollow Knight Silk Song will then release and everything about it will be perfect. It's not exactly Nintendo or on Switch, but it, this is my video so I can do whatever the hell I want. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 will get a new trailer this month with some more footage of Knuckles and a better idea of the plot, and I and many others will be very excited for it. We'll then get the Splatoon 3 Direct. They'll start by going over some new maps and some old returning ones. We'll then get a campaign mode tease, and this is where my first concept for the video comes in. That scene from the first trailer on the train will be continued and show lights flickering and going crazy and bizarro all of a sudden. And when the train stops, our character will find themselves in a weird parallel universe to the chaotic one they know. They're now in the universe of order, controlled by none other than Marina, formerly of Off the Hook and mysteriously, the world will be devoid of any inkling or octoling life. Bar the Squid Sisters and Captain Cuttlefish, who we've already seen in trailers being there. Also, due to the mysterious disappearance of inkling and octoling life, the Octarians of this world have turned into fluffy mammalians? Our hero will be told Marina is opening a portal back to their dimension. Our hero and friends' chance to escape! But they must first stop her from unleashing the mammalians back into the Chaos World, which would turn everybody fluffy. I think they'll then go on to reveal an alternative mode to Salmon Run, perhaps a mode with Octarians or a new species instead. I just doubt it'll be Salmonids this time because the players befriended one, but I can't see them getting rid of the sort of Salmon Run mode because it was just so good and so popular with a lot of people. The Direct will then end with a new reveal of a brand new news duo, this game's equivalent of the Squid Sisters or Off the Hook. The game will then be slated for the 22nd of July, 2022. March! Advance Wars will release, and I might buy it. Nonetheless, fans will be very, very happy bunnies. Triangle Strategy will release this month and be made fun of for its weird name, but people will still enjoy the story and gameplay very, very much. April! 
Sonic the Hedgehog 2 will release this month in cinemas, and it will have some slight issues with pacing and plot, but many will agree it's the best video game movie adaptation yet. Kirby will also release this month, and fans will love new aspects of it, but complain it's a bit too easy and could have been a little more open. May. This month we will get our first look at the Mario movie. It will be... weird? but will look like it has potential. The Metroid Prime Remaster will come out this month, and it will be fabulous and get the hype rolling for Metroid Prime 4. At this time, there will also be oodles and oodles of rumors pouring in about Metroid Prime 4 showing up soon, presumably at E3. I wasn't sure exactly where to put this prediction, but I'm just gonna put it in May. But I think we will get news at some point that Sonic Frontiers is delayed until 2023. I just have a gut feeling it won't come out this year and it's a 2023 game. June. Near the middle of the month, we'll get the regular E3 events, and in the Ubisoft presentation, we'll see a Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope trailer and it will be slated for September. And in the Nintendo presentation, we'll first get a Mario sports game, which will be announced and scheduled for August. It will be a new and epic Mario Strikers game that looks just as good as the one on Wii. Bayonetta 3 will get a spectacular trailer along with a release date of October 29th, 2022. We'll then get the full reveal of the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Along the lines of the January 2017 Switch presentation trailer for the first game, which will blow everyone away, and will end with a title reveal. It will be called The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Ages and given a solid release date of November 5th, 2022. To close the direct, we'll have a classic One Last Thing trailer, which will be a short cinematic teaser for Metroid Prime 4. It will be given a release date of 2023 and the Metroid fans will lose it. July. Splatoon 3 will release this month and everyone will be chuffed with it. The game will be named by everyone as the best Splatoon game and rumblings will start in the rumorverse about DLC for the game. August. This month we'll get another trailer for the Mario movie and it will be better received than the last one. It'll boast some epic visuals and all that stuff. It'll show a bit more promise than the last trailer for the movie being a good one, but there'll still be some doubts in everyone's mind. September. We'll get the regular September Nintendo Direct near the end of the month, and in it, they'll first announce a Legend of Zelda Link Between Ages Direct for early next month. We'll then get a teaser for a game that very few people thought would happen, ARMS 2. It'll be a crazy cinematic trailer with promises of a hub world, new, well-needed combat mechanics to add to the gameplay's depth, and a campaign mode with an actual narrative. As the one last thing they always do, we'll finally see a trailer for the incredibly heavily rumored Mario Odyssey 2, with a release window of 2023, and the crowd will go wild. Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope will then release, and it will improve significantly on the formula of the last game, but people will still feel iffy about it because it's a Ubisoft game. October. The Legend of Zelda Link Between Ages presentation will be excellent and generate a lot of hype for the game, showing off lots of new mechanics, enemies, and the return of more traditional dungeons, along with the return of mini dungeons, similar to the Breath of the Wild shrines. But people like me will be watching the presentation through our fingers, thinking they're showing just a little too much. This brings me to my second concept of the video. After the events of the first trailer, after Ganondorf has sent Princess Zelda cascading down into that chasm, he casts a spell on Link, which sends him backwards in time. A time to where everybody lives in the sky. You'll have to find a way back to the future. Am I allowed to say that phrase? Like, legally? Once you do, you can play in the future on the surface of Hyrule and make your way towards Ganon. But you will also need to go back in time regularly to change the past in order to aid your future. I haven't put too much thought into this concept as I really have literally no clue of what the trailers are trying to hint at what the final game will actually be like, but bloody hell am I excited for this game. To end the month, Bayonetta 3 will release and there will be much rejoicing among gross safts. November! The Legend of Zelda Link Between Ages will be released and will almost certainly be incredibly well received. December! The Game Awards will happen. Be too long and way too early in the morning for my time zone but The Legend of Zelda Link Between Ages will be up for Game of the Year and quite predictably lose to Elden Ring. But Nintendo will be here this year and will reveal Astral Chain 2 is now in development following the release of Bayonetta 3. The Mario movie will release and make a hell of a lot of money. 
It will be entertaining, but the voice acting will still feel a little weird, and the plot will feel a little unadventurous and predictable. It won't be a bad movie per se, but feel like they could have done a little more to take it from good to excellent. This brings me to the end of my prediction video. In no way do I expect all of these predictions to happen, but I thought it better to do some predictions that are more out there than have a video full of very safe ones. Well then, feel free to go down to the comments and tell everyone about your own predictions, or just to tell me how wrong mine are. Thanks for watching, and I'll probably see you next year with a video just like this one.